So I want you all to imagine for a moment that you're a soldier running through the battlefield. Now you get hit in the leg with a bullet, and this severs your femoral artery. Now this type of bleed is incredibly traumatic and can kill you in less than three minutes. Unfortunately, what a medic has on his or her belt by the time they get to you takes five minutes or more to stop such a traumatic bleed. Now this problem is not only endemic to the military, but it's also a huge problem in all fields of medicine, which is being able to quickly stop traumatic bleeds, and furthermore, being able to take technology that actually works with the body, as opposed to forcing it to do something that it doesn't want to do. For the last four years, I've been working in the field of smart biomaterials, which are materials that actually interface with the body and work with it to heal. But before we talk about that, we actually have to go into the body itself and what the body is made out of. Now, just about everybody here knows that the body is made up of cells, but I'd guess that not many other people would know what else. Well, it turns out that the body is made up of this thing called the extracellular matrix. Which is a mesh of fibers, proteins, and sugars that actually hold your cells into place. So your cells don't sit cell to cell in your skin, but they actually sit in this mesh, kind of like a jungle gym, and it actually creates something called a microenvironment for the cells. So this ECM tells the cells how to behave, how to act, and where they are. Think of it like a forest. You have the forest floor, the understory, and the canopy. Now, while all of these different pieces of the forest are made up of plants, all of them have different aspects to them, and different animals call them home. So, just as a bird would not thrive on the forest floor, and while an animal that's used to living on the forest floor would not thrive in the canopy, the cells are unique to each part of the ECM. And so that means if you took liver cells and tried to put them into the ECM of the skin, they would not thrive. So a lot of the technology right now tries to use a one-size-fits-all technique. To look at the way that we heal wounds, and that's incredibly incorrect.、Uh, so, what we're going to be talking about today is how we can actually get materials that interact and adapt to the body in the locality that it goes on to. So, basically, when we look at healing, in fact, a scar is actually poorly formed extracellular matrix. So that means that if you cut the body, the body will overreact and instantaneously start producing extracellular matrix in a way that is overexaggerated. And when that happens, you get something called a scar. So in order to be able to reduce scarring and to create a healing process that's much more efficient, again, we need to be able to interface with that. So that brought me to the question, which is how can we control the cell's environment? To improve wound care,、uh, so this brings me back to when I was a very young kid, and when I first got interested in chemistry. My grandfather was a winemaker, and every day he'd bring me into the winery and he'd teach me how to make wine. And I was about 11 or 12, and one day he told me, "Okay, it's your time. You can go into the lab and you can mix whatever chemicals you want together and just make something."、Uh, and being the 11-year-old that I was, I mixed something together. It exploded, and I ended up being blind for two weeks. Uh, so after that, my mom told me that I could absolutely not play with chemicals,、uh, but that I had to play with plants or something that was more safe.、Uh, so after that, I would go out into the vineyard and I'd start picking plants and trying to figure out what I could do and what I could extract from these plants. And one day, I was playing around with algae, and I was a little bit older by this time, and I realized that the extract that I took out of algae, when you put this onto a wound, it would actually change structure. And I had an idea, which was. Taking these pieces that are derived from plants and breaking them down into very small pieces like Lego blocks, so that these Lego blocks can actually reassemble into whatever they put or into whatever you put them next to. So now behind me, this is an animation of the extracellular matrix. So your cells again sit in this mesh, and this mesh is unique to whatever you put it next to. Now, like I said, every other piece of technology that exists today can only manage a two-dimensional approximation of this matrix, which means that it does not interact with the body as it needs to be interacted with. Now, what we mean by a smart biomaterial is a material that will actually rebuild this matrix so that the body recognizes it. So, in the case of this type of bleed behind me, we have a gel that will actually go onto this wound, and with the plant-derived pieces that I spoke about, it will look for these broken strands of the extracellular matrix and begin to rebuild almost instantaneously. So, in the case of a bleed that's bleeding very rapidly, your body will actually be able to heal itself over in less than 10 seconds and stop the bleed. <laughs> Thank、you
Now, what's again behind me is this is a simulation of a human arterial bleed running at twice artery pressure. Now, like I said earlier, this type of bleed would take five minutes or longer to stop with anything else in the market. And in the time that it takes me to introduce the bleed itself, we've already been able to stop it. So again, this technology is able to reassemble into whatever it goes next to and very instantaneously create a very durable clot. Thank you. So this technology right now is being or is approved for use in the animal health industry in the United States and should be in the hands of veterinarians by early 2015. And we're working very diligently to get it FDA approved in the US and get it into the hands of humans around the world, which should happen in about a year. But as you probably can see, the applications of this technology does not ex or it extends much past hemostasis itself, meaning that we can work in the fields of drug delivery, in burn treatment, in wound healing, and maybe one day even the regeneration of organs. Uh, so this technology is very widespread. Uh, we're really looking for collaborations and partners to help us be able to bring this into all of the different applications that we can get this into. But once more, I want you guys to imagine that you're a soldier running through the battlefield. You're again hit in the femoral artery with a bullet, which creates a very traumatic bleed that can kill you in less than three minutes. But instead of waiting for a medic to get to you, you pull a very small pack of gel off of your belt, and with the press of a button, your bleeding is stopped, and, on, and you're on your way to healing. Thank you very much.